From their stations at home and abroad came ships of the Royal Navy to assemble at Spithead for the coronation review of the fleet. This is the battleship HMS Vanguard. And here is the aircraft carrier HMS Eagle, one of the largest and most powerful units of the fleet. The cruiser Glasgow, typical of the ships who play so vital a part in keeping our trade routes open in time of war. The mine layer Manxman, famous for its wartime dash to Malta with food supplies. This is one of the daring class ships, fast, hard-hitting vessels all equipped for anti-submarine attack. Then steaming in light ahead came the frigates. This class covers what were formerly known as sloops, corvettes and hunt class destroyers. Their main purpose is anti-submarine and anti-aircraft work. This is a minesweeper of the Algerine class, one of the many whose never-ending task in wartime is so arduous. Fast patrol boats were to be represented at Spithead. These are descendants of the coastal forces which did such fine service in the war years. There too were submarines of all classes. <laughs> This was the scene at Spithead. Along the lines of ships at anchor in the Solent, the frigate HMS Surprise was to pass in performance of her duty as royal yacht for the Queen. At Portsmouth on Sunday, June the 14th, 1953, Her Majesty was piped on board. Later, the Duke of Edinburgh joined the Queen, who received captains of many of the ships present. The Queen Mother and Princess Margaret were among other members of the royal family to board surprise. At 3 p.m. on June the 15th, surprise, flying the royal standard and the Admiralty flag, drew slowly away from the jetty and the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh made their way to the saluting platform. The Trinity House yacht Patricia moved into place at the head of the royal procession. Among those on board were Sir Winston Churchill, who is an elder brother of Trinity House, and Mr. Clement Attlee. A royal salute of 21 guns fired by all the saluting ships greeted the royal yacht. Minesweepers such as HMS Welcome on the left were among the first ships reviewed by the Queen. Here is a fast patrol boat. Then Surprise turned to pass between the lines of carriers and ships of foreign fleets towards Vanguard, the ship who had taken the Queen when she was Princess Elizabeth to South Africa. Vanguard was the flagship of the home fleet. A Royal Marine Band saluted Her Majesty as surprise drew near the great battleship. As surprise came near, each ship, British and foreign, gave three cheers for Her Majesty. An American visitor was USS Baltimore. From France came the cruiser Montcalm. Close by was HMS Eagle, the successor to the other famous carrier Eagle sunk during one of the Malta convoys.
Other ships who escorted Surprise included the navigational training ships Starling and Red Pearl, the radio trial ship Fleetwood, and the frigate Helmsdale. Next in the line was Indomitable, a carrier of the illustrious class. The Soviet Union sent their new cruiser Sverdlov to the review. She was making her first visit to a foreign port since she went into commission two years ago. Very few details have been released about Sverdlov, though 12 six-inch guns form part of her armament. The aircraft carrier Indefatigable, who during the war gave distinguished service and is now part of the training squadron. The fleet anchorage at Spithead has been the scene of many naval reviews, and many fleets, including the great D-Day Armada, have gathered here. The Italian training ship Amerigo Vespucci provided an echo of the past at the 1953 review and was perhaps the most picturesque vessel present. Her crew manned the yards high above the deck as surprise passed by. The depot ship Adamant is a floating base for submarines. Far away in the background can be seen the three funnels of the Devonshire, well known for her many years' service as a cadet's training cruiser. HMS Protector was designed for net laying and target towing. The Maidstone and the Montclair, two more submarine depot ships. Next in the line were the submarines themselves. Even as the review was taking place, came news that HMS Andrew, an A-class submarine, had performed the magnificent feat of crossing the Atlantic underwater, a voyage of 2,840 miles. Coming back through the lines, surprise passed yet more frigates. This is HMS Brocklesby. Next to Brocklesby was anchored the frigate Orwell. Termagant, a fast anti-submarine frigate, was next to be reviewed. This is Tyrion, a sister ship of Termagant, also equipped for anti-submarine work. Moving past Tyrion, surprise came next to the frigate HMS Tenacious. This is the destroyer St. Kitts, one of the battle class. Her high speed and great manoeuvrability make her a suitable craft for almost any duty. Passing between St. Kitts and her sister ship Finisterre, the royal yacht neared Barfleur, another of the battle class destroyers. Next to be reviewed were anti-submarine escort destroyers of the weapon class. This is Crossbow. The weapon class destroyers carry squids as part of their anti-submarine armament. These are three barreled mortars which fire a pattern of large projectiles ahead of the ship with great accuracy. The squids are used in conjunction with ASDIC sets which reveal the range, depth and direction of submarines.
In the far distance, ships of the Commonwealth fleets were anchored. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, India and Pakistan were all represented in this splendid tribute to the newly crowned Queen. The gallant veteran Devonshire was next to salute Her Majesty. This is the cruiser Sheffield. Then came Swiftshire, flagship of the home fleet flotillas. In the background, the fast mine layer, Manxman. The cruiser Gambia, flagship of the Mediterranean flotillas. She is a colony class cruiser of 8,000 tons and carries nine six inch guns as main armament. In the background is the light cruiser Dido, flagship of the reserve fleet. The cruiser Glasgow was the last ship the Royal Yacht passed on the line. She was the flagship of the Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet. Glasgow is one of our largest cruisers of some 9,000 tons. Surprise anchored only a short distance from Vanguard. The Royal Yacht had travelled about 14 miles on her journey up and down the lines of warships. There was still one more part of the Royal Navy to salute the Queen, the Fleet Air Arm. Heading a great fly past came Dragonfly helicopters. These aircraft are much used by the Navy for rescue and fleet communications work. The flag officer in command of the fly past flew a vampire jet fighter across Spithead. The Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, the Royal Canadian Navy and the Royal Australian Navy all took part in the fly past. More than 300 planes flew in salute, including fireflies, sea furies, sea hornets, sky raiders, avengers, meteors, attackers and sea hawks. Flying overhead, it was possible to see more than 300 ships of the Royal Navy, the Commonwealth and Foreign Fleets, the Merchant Navy and Fishing Fleets. Her Majesty the Queen transferred from surprise to Vanguard for dinner. But the fleet review celebrations had not yet ended. As darkness fell, final preparations were made to illuminate the ships. At 10.30, 
At a signal given by Her Majesty, the darkened fleet was lit by a million twinkling lights. And then, in final tribute to Her Majesty, thousands of fireworks were set off, a glittering finale to the coronation review of the fleet.